Okay, today we're going to be talking about the battle of the mini saws. <laughs> or maybe I should say the pocket saws. Or rather, today we're going to be taking a look at the Gomboy 210 versus the Baco Laplander. Now I know I'm far from the first person to do this video, and I'll say I'm a little bit different because I'm comparing the curved versus the straight edge to Baco. But today we're going to be talking about these two saws and which one I like the most. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So let's open these bad boys up and see what we're dealing with. So on the bottom, of course, we have the Silky Gomboy. And like I said, it's the 210 with the curved blade. And I like the curved blade just a little bit more. Now, in fairness, the uh, Baco Laplander does not come in a curved blade configuration. So this might be a slight disadvantage of a video to the poor uh, Baco because the Baco being a straight bladed saw and having a slightly smaller edge of course will not cut as fast as the silky and even at that silkies are renowned for their ability to cut very fast and yeah they are definitely a strong contender to beat in general but we're going to be looking at these two and kind of explaining why you might want to go with either one. Now, in this video, I know I kind of said in the beginning that I was going to tell you which one's the best, but truly, I don't think that there is any necessary winner here, but rather there are better choices for better situations. And what I mean by that is that the Baco Laplander is definitely a great saw. And Baco, for those who don't know, uh, both of these companies really are not new to the saw making industry. And Baco certainly is not. They make a lot of buck saw blades and longer, you know, 24 and 30 inch blades. But they also do make the Laplander and they know how to make saw blades that last the test of time, that hold up well and do a good job cutting. So don't uh, make me or don't make it out to seem that Baco doesn't know what they're doing. They may only have one smaller folding saw kind of option uh, in their lineup, but they definitely do make a lot of saws or saw blades. Silky, of course, is renowned, or renowned for their folding saws. They make many different types. Of course, if you've been around the channel for any time, you know that I already own a Silky Big Boy, and I really love the Big Boy. Uh, I've never really been disappointed by it, and it is a great, in my mind, kind of bridging the gap between my 24 and 30 inch buck saw and you know these fall these smaller pocket saws basically where you can throw these in your cargo pants pockets and forget about them so i do love silky as well like i said they know what they're doing when they make a saw and they do a pretty good job as well however there are some differences i would say that when it comes down to it from my experience and from what i've learned in research the Baco is definitely a good saw if you're looking for something that's very durable and if you're looking for something that has very something that's very durable and very reliable. It may not be the fastest saw to cut, but at the same time the Baco will not fail you. It's a very simple system and uh, it certainly can hold up to a lot of abuse. I know quite a few people that have owned Laplanders for years on years and you know they never have any issues with the saw blades breaking, snapping, you know permanently bending or anything like that and that is because the heat treat is done simply differently on the Baco. The Baco uses a heat treat that is really just on the tips of the cutting uh, saw blade but the actual saw blade itself albeit a little bit hard to bend is very bendable. In addition to this the Baco uh, Laplander saw blade, like the actual uh, saw blade itself, is slightly thicker in blade thickness. Now, it's going to be pretty hard to see here, but you know this is just slightly thicker, and that is even without the coating. So that is what you're dealing with when it comes to a Baco Laplander. They are slightly smaller, slightly thicker blade steel and a heat treat that I won't say is better, but leaves the steel more flexible. 
so you have a better kind of heat treat for flexibility, which does add to durability ultimately. And overall, I still love the Baco Laplander, and make no mistakes, this thing is still pretty darn fast when it comes to processing wood. Now, moving over to the Gomboy. Now, like I said, this is the 210, so this is the closest in blade length, albeit the blade length is still slightly more on the Gomboy 210, but it is the closest thing you can get because the Pocket Boys are a little bit smaller than the Laplander, and the Gomboy 240 and 270s are much bigger than the Laplander. This one is only about an inch, maybe half an inch longer than the or the uh, Laplander. So this is the Gomboy, of course, like I said, this one has a curved edge, which gives it a little bit of an unfair uh, advantage because, of course, with the uh, curved edge, especially with silkies, because silkies cut on the pull stroke and not the push stroke, whereas the Laplander cuts on both strokes. Um, this one, you know, being curved, when you pull it back uh, and it's cutting, it has a little bit more of an advantage because you're pulling on this curve, and this curve is designed to dig into the wood and um, kind of bite in a little bit more. So the curve definitely gives it a little bit of an advantage, but by and large, what makes the Silky better is that it has longer teeth, even on even if you don't go with the large tooth option. The Silkies have a longer tooth, and that means that they have more cutting edge on, per tooth. And also, these things are very sharp. These Silky uh, edges, or these Silky uh, saw blades or saw teeth are very sharp, and make no mistake about that. And then lastly, what makes the Silky truly a faster cutter is that it has a thinner blade stock. So it's not much thinner than the uh, Laplander, but it is thinner than the Laplander, and therefore it is easier to cut through things because there's less resistance and there's less material that has to be moved through the object that you're trying to cut. Now, the problem with the Gomboy is just that, being that it has a being that it has teeth that are ground higher up the blade stock, and being that the blade stock is thinner, these things are far more prone to snapping and cracking. And if I remember correctly too, the uh, silkies are also uh, harder, or they're treated, or I should say, um, they are heat treated to be a harder steel. So on these teeth, uh, they are differentially treated uh, to be a little bit harder than the Baco Laplander. So when it comes to it, this is also a little bit more brittle of an edge. And that's really all it takes because oftentimes when these things snap, they're not snapping from like the spine or, you know, back here, but they're snapping, you know, from the edge. And once, you know, a little bit of it cracks back here, the whole thing is going to crack. And so with the blade being treated a little bit harder means that it is a little bit more brittle and more likely to crack. However, these things still are fairly durable, just not as durable as the Bacos, <clears throat> just not as durable as the Baco Laplanders. And ultimately, that means that you have to be a little bit more careful with the Silkies and that they are ultimately a little bit more fragile. Now, I will say the Gomboy certainly does cut noticeably faster than the Laplander. And in addition to that, the traction is much better. This is a very sticky, very abrasive, and maybe not abrasive, but it's a very sticky, very tacky, and very traction-oriented uh, handle. And it feels, uh, the rubberized grip feels much better than on the Baco Laplander. Whereas this does have a rubberized grip but that rubberized grip is definitely harder, like it's a harder rubber, and you can kind of dig into it, but it's not quite the same as the Silky. Now, the other advantage that the Baco does have over the Silky is the fact that it is, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, about half the price. You can get the Bacos for around 18 to $20, and the Gomboys, Gumboy 210s, uh, the curved are a little bit more expensive, but the straight edges are around $40, so like $37 to 
uh, on Amazon. And so the Gone Boys are certainly more expensive. And that does kind of lead to another downside because these are more expensive and they are more fragile. So you do have to be more experienced and what I would say more careful. I have read plenty of reviews on Gone Boys saying that, you know, you just you have to be more mindful when you're using a Gone Boy and, you know, you have to be careful not to, you know, let the blade flex or, you know, bend it in any way because that can make it, you know, more prone to breakage. But either way, you know, you kind of have to pick your poison when it comes to small saws like these. <clears throat> you know, each one has their own distinct advantage. And, you know, for me personally, I'm going to probably end up running the Gomboy more than the Baco Laplander, even though I still love the Laplander. But for me, I'm not a particularly careless or particularly, um, I don't... I don't find myself in situations where I feel like I would break the Gomboy, but there are certain circumstances where, you know, if you are careless or if you aren't, you know, putting your full intention into it, there are certainly opportunities for you to break the Gomboy. So carry that or make that, make of it what you will. There is no perfect tool or we would all be using that perfect tool. But I will say that's what I can gather from the Gone Boy. And I think that there are a lot of people that are divided between the two. Where, you know, they only swear by Silky or they only swear by Baco. But in my opinion, you know, you just have to find the right tool for the right job. And you also have to know the user. And if the user, the user is yourself, you have to understand, you know, what level of capacity, you know, how hard are you on your tools, what environment uh, are you going into, and what do you need out of your tool. Because there's a high chance that, you know, if you are harder on your tools or you are in more of a rough environment where you know, the Silky may break, the Baco will probably be just fine. Because when we talk about noticeably faster cut times, the Silky is faster. But I'm not saying that it's like a minute faster or something like that. It's more like the Silky is probably about 15 to 20 seconds faster than the Baco Laplander. So if you're looking for that extra durability, it's not a huge trade-off to go down to something like the Baco Laplander. And in addition to that, they're also much easier to come by and cheaper to acquire. So you got to take those things into account when choosing the perfect pocket saw. But that is my experience with the Gomboy and with the Baco Laplander. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and hopefully you've learned something new from it. As always, God bless and I'm out.